Hey everybody, good morning. I made it to the scheduled time. Woo! It's just been such a crazy week. We are so close to Friday. I am excited. I can't wait to tiptoe across the line for 2020. It's been brutal for a lot of people and um, the holiday seasons are almost upon us. So it will be great to be able to start off next year with a bang. I'm hoping that some of these strategies that I have provided have given you some guidance and some steps to take on how to grow your business. I think that's really important. I still see a lot of you charging by the hour. If you um, still have any questions at all with the flat rate versus hourly rate, I'll be more than happy to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Or if I need to clarify and do another video that breaks it down step by step, I can do that too. I just wanna make sure that we um, all collaboratively as a group start to move in that direction. I want to see you guys paid what you're worth. It's it's you really the only way to make any money in this industry is to charge a flat rate. And we all know that it takes a lot of sweat equity to get that going. So um, if that's something that you're interested, just leave me a message below. But today we are going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, doing a bid in person. Um, I actually currently don't do any bids in person and haven't done so in about five years. I thought it was about three years, but I actually looked at the calendar. It's been about five years. And the reason for that is because I get 50 to 100 phone calls every single day. There just isn't enough of me and one individual to go and do bids. Um, you can train your employees to do that. That's something we can talk about later. If you still want people to go and do bids, you have more of a probability of closing a bid if you do it in person than you do over the phone because over the phone it's all about price um everybody has the same thing it's like getting a haircut right i want my hair blonde woohoo and i'm going to go to the person that i think is going to give me the best um service for the amount of money that i can afford so um but when you go in person it brings it up to a whole nother level so step one you should already have your onboarding paperwork with you I actually have left a copy of my old onboarding paperwork. Please grab it out of the Google Drive. Um, it's roughly 20 pages long. If you print it front to back, it's 10. It'll cost you like 30 or 40 cents to print each one. You can do color, black and white. But when you hand them the book after you've done the bid, it's it's a little weighty and it means that you're being serious and that you're professional. And it kind of goes over some basic parameters of what expectations are, like the clutter rule. We always talk about clutter here in this group or um, cancellation policy. That's also another big one that I see a lot in this group is so-and-so canceled at the last minute. And I know COVID adds a different layer and different element to it, but in normal times, if we ever go back to normal times, it will be slightly different. So you wanna have that cancellation policy. I have a very stringent cancellation policy and the reason for that is because I don't want people to mess around with my schedule. I want to come in and I want to get it done and I have other things to do with my time. I only work three days a week as a cleaner and I have other things with my other businesses that I'm working on. So um, that's really important to me. And when you are canceling, as we all know, at the last minute, you're not making that income. It's not like they're paying you for it. Um, they're just like, sorry, canceled, you know? So when you have a stringent cancellation policy and I'm trying, I'm firm with them, and I tell them up front, this is what my cancellation policy, and I explain, you know, I'm here to fill spots on the schedule, and basically, if they cancel at the last minute, my cleaning techs who are out there working still get paid. So um, that's really important to me. So the first thing I do when I arrive at the house, I'm on time, I'm in uniform, and I have my little clipboard in hand. And um, I'm talking to Mrs. Smith, and I'm looking at, I'm not really looking at the dirt and not doing a lot of looking at her house to see how dirty it is I'm actually having a conversation with her do not mention okay let's get right to the bid just walk in and say oh my gosh your house is so lovely I love that artwork or that bronze statue is that a limited edition blah 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 you want to talk about her home typically if it's a female most of the 90% of them are going to be female so you want to give them an option to be proud of their house I don't mention the bid we both know I'm there to do the bid and then I'm walking around and I'm looking at things but I'm not saying anything so like I'm running my finger across the blinds to see how much dust has accumulated I'm running my fingers across the that railing I forget what it's called off the top of my head in the shower that bar to see if there's been any um, build up there I probably have more pictures of toilets in my phone than the average person. And 
because I'm looking. I'm looking to see if they've maintained their toilet. If they don't maintain their toilet, that means that they really don't maintain the rest of the house either. And I'm kind of just looking at things. I'm not really touching or saying a lot. I'm just asking, would you like the binds feather dusted or would you like them wiped each time? Um, I'm giving them kind of options on what my price point is going to be. So obviously we know that feather dusting doesn't take as long as actually wiping all of those items. If you have a lady who says, I have a housekeeper and I want her to wipe, that is a different service than an actual feather dust. Regular maintenance cleaning is feather dusting. And we all know how to get rid of all the excess dust in our feather dusters. Matt, you just tap it. I usually tap mine on my butt because I'm lazy to reach my foot, but you should just tap it on your foot. That way all that dust accumulates to the floor. Um, other things I'm looking at, I'm running my finger along the inside of the shower and I'm looking to see how smooth it is and how much buildups on there. If it's smooth as a baby's bottom, then you know that they're pretty good at maintaining the shower. I love those people. <laughs> I love the people who have squeegees, but not everyone believes in being that methodical. If they make their bed versus not making their bed is an also an indicator if they're organized or not organized. We know that 90% people who make their bed are more organized and get more things done because they're just more productive. I know there's going to be haters out there and say, I never make my bed and I'm productive. But for the most part, we're talking about generalizations. Um, what other odd little things I've done? I've talked about artwork the entire time and how great that picture is. I used to work for the Metropolitan Museum of Art so I could tell and identify certain pieces of fine art. And I think that's a great conversation to talk to. Um, sometimes when you get to the house, um, they're going to want to sit you down and they'll have a little list written out. So I'll usually let them guide. I'll be like, you know, what side of the house do you want me to look at? And then I'll sit down with them. I'll go over the bullet points and I'll be like, okay, well, this is what I think your bid's going to be. And then I canned them the paperwork. I leave it with them. Um, I leave it with them for a lot of reasons. I leave it with them because they're going to remember you gave them a substantial amount of paper. Um, I leave it with them because they're going to call other competitors and those other competitors are going to do the same thing as you and they're going to see that you've already been there. <laughs> so it's kind of a little bit of an intimidation thing, but it lets them know you've already been there to bid. Um, when you get to a house and you see three or four other brochures because she's gotten three or four other companies come, she's definitely a shopper and it's going to come down all to price. So it's not going to quality. She's going to want the quality, but it's just going to come down to price. And that's just the reality of the situation. So that's also really important. Sometimes you're going to get people who um, aren't going to be able to walk with you because they're on oxygen. So I'll be like, well, do you mind if I tiptoe around the house and I'll just kind of look um, pretty good to see, you know, where they want clean versus they don't want cleaned. Obviously, you're not going to want to clean someone's master bedroom closet. Um, some people want it vacuumed. It just depends. Some people, a big thing is cleaning under the bed. I'll actually get down on the floor and look under the bed. Do they have items under the bed? Do they have huge dust bunnies? These are all things I look at to kind of figure out what it is that they need to have done. And when they see you get up and down and that you're looking, those are going to be subliminal points that are gonna tell them that you actually know what you're talking about and that you really are a professional cleaner. So those are some of the things that I've done to help facilitate closing the deal. And then um, when I give them the price, after I hand them the paperwork, I don't say anything for 10 seconds. My husband taught me this trick and it's called the 10 second pause. So you say something to the other person and then you be quiet for 10 seconds and how you do that is you count in your head one to ten hard initially hard initially to do but once you give them the 10 second pause it gives them time to kind of acclimate and figure out what's going to happen and then after you give them the 10 second pause and they still haven't said anything then that's the time to say you know um what would you like to be ask would you like to, for me to put you on the schedule and they'll either say yes or no, or I have to talk to my husband. We all know that's code for, I think that's too expensive. I'm still shopping around. <laughs> so that's totally okay. And then what you do is you go in and you give them the bid and then you leave. And then what I would do is I would do a follow-up call roughly two days later. And then sometimes because I've gotten their email, I'll send them a follow-up email and that's how you're going to market to them later. I hope this kind of makes sense. So you're just following through, even though if they don't do business with you right away, you've kind of left an impression with them. And then what will happen, and I've seen this happen, I don't know, 99% of the times, they'll go with someone cheaper and then they hate it because that person doesn't know what they're doing or they feel that they're not, the person isn't giving them their money's worth or whatever the case may be. 
And then usually about six months later, I'll hear from them and they'll be like, okay, I tried so-and-so and it sucked. How much was it again? And I usually have that in my computer because I have it in the digital calendar system. So hopefully um, these are all really good valid points for you to close the deal, but you don't know until you ask. Do not take the time to drive all the way across town, get in your car, put on your uniform, make sure you're clean and pressed, present them with paperwork without asking for the job. <laughs> Ask for the job. You deserve to have the job. If you didn't deserve to have the job, you would not be there face to face. I hope that makes sense. And again, if you guys need onboarding paperwork, I put it inside of the Google Drive. All you have to do is click it, download it. It's a PDF. You can copy and paste and adjust it for where it has a non-solicitation. It has the cancellation policy. It goes over this 70% um, clutter rule. Um, it goes over scheduling times, what we pick up, what we don't pick up, how you're not going to pick up dog poop versus you are going to pick up dog poop. Or maybe you're not going to do the cat box because you're allergic to cats. There's all of these different things that you need to um, assimilate into your bid. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. You guys have a fabulous, fabulous Thursday. Take care.